My name is Kevin Slimko. If you met me within the last 20 years, you probably know me for cutting hair. But if you met me in the 20 years before that, you probably knew me as a hooper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when I was a teen, I had a simple dream. Wow. Take the status, keep the balance like a triple wow. beam. You beam up Scotty, blowing pipes like you Pavarotti. Talk about Illuminati, dreaming about a Maserati. I'm from the land of Lottie Dottie, where we body rock, party hard. You never see me with nobody guard. Stay in your lane, lame, it's the same. You claim you got. I'm on it, put you in the county, now you be your bra. Back on a boulevard, I be the ruler, now I'm cooler. Using my medulla, instead of making moolah off the ruler. And let me see you wanna find a place to make a snap. And you wouldn't believe it, but I still play ball. Still play ball with guys that I played against in high school and we played together for the last 20 years. I am excited about this year's squad. We got me and Dave and Shake, all some old guys we've been playing together for a long time. I played against both of them in high school. Uh, the team that they had when they were both there, Dave's a year older than us, he graduated in 92 and Sherrick graduated in 93 with me. And their team at Elgin Larkin, uh, my junior year was one of the best high school teams I ever played against. And they weren't uh, much worse our senior year either. They were really good both years. So uh, it's always been fun to knowing these guys since we were about 15 or so and still playing together to this day. We got my son, Calvin. <laughs> We have our second son on the team, David Binion Jr., who's going to be the most athletic person on the team. Our other friend, Wallace, who's played with us for many years. Wallace isn't playing, but his son, Julian, is playing. Uh, my son's friends, uh, Mike and uh, Adam Pischke. Adam played at uh, Division II school, and Calvin and Mike just graduated high school this year. Playing in all these men's leagues with, with David and Sherrick and Wallace throughout the years, we've you know, it's been a lot of fun getting to know all those guys a lot better. And I thought it would be a lot of fun and a special thing for us to all play together now that our kids are adults. The guys, you know, it's, uh, you know, watching them from when they were in their fifth, sixth grade all the way up into their early 20s, you know, it's, it's, it's really good. And you, and you look for those moments when they were growing up, man, I can't wait till these guys get old enough to actually play with us if we're still playing. and. You know, fortunately, we got the opportunity to still <laughs> run up and down the court with these guys. Welcome to Huntley, Illinois. When I was in high school, Huntley was just a little farming community. Now the high school has over 3,000 students in it and is the 28th largest public school in Illinois. Even while growing that much in the last 30 years, I'm sure a lot of people have never heard of Huntley. People probably think, oh, there's no basketball players in Huntley. But trust me, I'm a big believer in the fact that there are talented players everywhere. Unfortunately, none of those players were on the first team that we played. We won 93-45, to so we're just going to skip to week number two. Yesterday was Father's Day, and we were supposed to go uh, kayaking on the Fox River from downtown Algonquin to Carpentersville. And I was playing basketball in the morning, and I took a pretty good shot to my left elbow and didn't think much of it at the time. But as I was driving home, I noticed that I couldn't fully extend my left arm and I couldn't bring it back uh, all the way into my body. So I thought, you know what? I probably shouldn't go kayaking today. So we skipped kayaking and I went to the immediate care, saw the doctor, got my x-ray, x-ray came back no no broken bones i remember when calvin did it when he was a kid he had something called nursemaid's elbow and they just popped it right back in i thought maybe they could do that for me but that wasn't the case she said i have a sprained elbow you know the first things that you think about is oh man i can't go kayaking with the kids on father's day and then the next thing you think about is i probably have to sit out this week's game and the third thing I thought about was, you know what? You're a barber. You got to use both your hands in your job and your arm mobility is a big thing. So kind of nervous today to see how that works out, to see if I can cut hair 
uh, and do all the things that I'm supposed to be able to do at the barber shop. So I'm on my way to work right now. I just got done with work and you know, it wasn't too bad. Uh, my elbow actually feels better right now than it did this morning, which is great. Uh, to start out the day, I couldn't push down on our shave cream dispenser and I couldn't open the door with my left hand by pushing it and I would have to push it with my right hand, but now I can push again, uh, feels great. Uh, every injury at, <laughs> at this age, you think this could be the last one, could, could stop you from playing, could knock some sense into your head that you, hey, you gotta work tomorrow and you got a physically demanding job. I'm on the second day after spraining my elbow and it already feels a lot better. I bet I'll probably be tempted to play tomorrow night, but I don't think we're really going to need me against this team and it's probably better off for my job and future playing if I sit out tomorrow. So, you know, we'll see how it goes, see how, see how our team does. We're already missing Big Dave, so I picked up one of our subs and uh, I'm sure he's going to do fine. Uh, the subs are Mike Ernst, Eamon, and Jim Clark. We got Eamon? Yeah, but Eamon's going to be in Italy for the next three weeks, and then he won't even be here for the last week of the season. Last week, the first week, which we didn't even videotape, that team was just <laughs> terrible. They seemed like good kids, and they played hard. But tonight's game will be better. I don't suspect we should have any trouble with this team. And I looked on the schedule and it said they lost last week 47 to 37. As long as we got you for that Henderson Ballers matchup. Yeah, the Henderson Ballers. I don't want to look past the team. We got the Henderson family next week, Jesse and Jaden. And those kids on that team look very athletic and very good. Did you find out what time you work next week? Or what? what time your game is? No. You didn't. It's coming. <laughs> what are you doing? What's your prediction for our finish? Champions, of course. Got to win. Got to win. So we get to the game, and I realize that I do know a lot of the guys on the Ken Bird team. I play in a few open gyms where a lot of them go to play, and uh, they're all pretty good players. Always a good thing to have one of us start out the game with a bucket on the first possession, especially one of us older guys. Sometimes we fall into, into spots where, well, this guy hits a tough shot here, but we fall into spots where we let them score some easy buckets. Now see, this is just a good play right here. This is who I call Manu Ginobili of the local open gyms. Nice lefty. Slim's Barbershop starting out the game strong, but Ken Bird is not going away. Calvin enters the game and immediately hits the shot. Mike Ernst with the post move. The lefty in the pink shorts has really come out strong this game. The Slim's team better pay attention to him. Big Tim to the rack. I've heard that if you ask Tim, he's never fouled anyone. Pink shorts again. Dave Jr. to the lane and hits the layup. Slim staying ahead but having trouble getting to a safe lead. Cal to Mike for the three. Bang! Mike, being a pass-first point guard, often passed up open shots until his senior year of high school. It's nice to see that he has embraced the scoring role. Pink shorts again. Calvin and Mike give and go for the layup. Here's Big Tim. Making sure the refs call the and one. The Park District Ginobili starts out the second half with a bucket in the post. Calvin brings the ball up. Slims needs a good shot. Oh, Calvin, quick jumper, good. Pink shorts again from three. 45-39, Slims. 
Sherrick drives, no good. Gets his own rebound, hits the putback. Maybe Pink Short's last shot lit a fire under Sherrick. David Jr. with a layup and one. Big Tim arguing the call. Slim seems to be clicking on all cylinders and ready to cruise to this victory. Slim's Barbershop with the big win, 85-54. Calvin is the type of player that needs to feel confident both in himself and from his teammates and from his coach. One of the coaches that uh, Calvin always seemed to have good games when he was playing for was actually at the game last night. So hopefully Andrew Hogel is at the next game and uh, Calvin can pull out some magic. Something that could be seen as a negative so far is that Adam Pischke has not had a great shooting night yet. But I view that as a positive because we have looked pretty good so far even though our best shooter has not had his best games. I'm confident that once he gets rolling, we'll be tough to beat. Now prior to this season, I'd never seen Adam Pischke play basketball before. I'd always heard that he was really good. I know that he played at Lewis University, which is Division II school, and he played high school at Marion Central. I'd also heard that the Notre Dame coach told him that when he was in high school, he would have been recruiting him if he was six foot four. That's not really very shocking to me. What most people don't realize is the lower levels of college athletics are usually not determined by skill. It's usually by quickness and by size. So you take a six foot one kid who can shoot real well and he can handle the ball and he'll play at division three. If he's a full step or two steps quicker, he can play at division two. If he's still that much quicker and six foot five, he can play division one. The first time I'd ever seen Adam was when he was helping coach at Cary Grove High School where my son and Mike Clark were seniors. We were at a fall basketball competition and I saw this young kid who I thought was one of their friends from high school and he's sitting on the bench with them. And I was videotaping the game and I'm kind of giving my two cents to the kids while they're playing. And I see this young man saying basically the same thing as me at all times. And as we're watching the games later on, Calvin goes, you and Pishke keep saying the same things. And I said, that was Adam Pishke? He looks so little. I thought he was one of your friends. And all I kept thinking was, if he's so intelligent about basketball, why is he not playing on this team? So against Let's Eat, we're going to be missing two of our more physically gifted players in, in the Binions. Dave Jr. and Sr. are going to be on vacation. It just adds to our... Our conundrum of of playing against this young, very athletic team. We're gonna need Adam Pischke to show up because we need the real Adam Pischke to hit some shots for us. Last game, I feel like if he was playing at his full capacity, he probably would have had 40 points. Calvin's game against the Ken Bird team, he had a real good game, but I'm looking for him to to really come through for us and score. And, and the team that we're playing next, Let's Eat, they're gonna be a real test to see if he can actually do that. You know, it's it's easy to, uh, to have a good game when the guys you're playing against aren't as physically gifted as you and you can kind of go by them and, and do your will. And uh, he's not gonna be able to do that next game. This kid's eyes have been red since he was four years old. He never drinks any water. I do now. Yeah, but it's still, still not enough. I don't even know, I don't know who has offensive skill on their team, but they, they're they good. I know Jaden. Yeah. I know that one point guard is not bad. So do you think you'll try out for the club team, Cal, at IU? Maybe not this year, but next year why not this year well you don't you try out in like the fall i mean i don't know what, what's up agnes i don't see why not i'm beginning to realize that playing on the indiana university club basketball team is more my dream for calvin than it is calvin's dream for calvin and I don't think that I necessarily ever lived through my kid playing sports, but you just never want to stop watching your kids compete. At least I don't. 
Throughout my career as a barber, I've always had some nagging complications, whether it be with my shoulders, my feet, my knees, whatever. And then also with all the injuries from playing basketball, I've had my fair share of abuse. All right, go ahead and press your big toes forward. Luckily, my girlfriend Carrie is a yoga instructor and she almost always has a plan to get me working without pain and back on the basketball court in a minimal amount of time. Come to child's pose. Use your right knee for leverage on the back of your right arm. Roll your shoulder back. See what's more comfortable if you come into a bend. She just said what's more comfortable. Nothing is comfortable. But the one thing I know is that at the end of this class, I'll have a better chance of working comfortably throughout the day and the next few days. And most importantly, I'll be able to play on Wednesday. Getting nervous because it's now eight days after I sprained my elbow. The doctor told me to wait 10 days and uh, it's not really making any progress past about right here. Uh, I'm hoping that it'll be all right by Wednesday because I'm playing. How'd the first two games go, Shane? Uh, not too bad. Uh... I think we look good as far as team-wise, but you know, like we say, we ain't been tested yet, so we can't really take those two games in consideration. So tonight will be a good test for us, so hit me after the game and I'll let you know how the first three went. <laughs> Here we are, the third game of the season. Slim's Barbershop taking on Let's Eat, both teams at 2-0. and Look at what we have here. Jesse Henderson comes out defending Kevin Slimko and his son. Jaden Henderson is guarding Calvin Slimko. Slim often refers to Jesse as the best defender he's ever played against. The two have been friends since Slim was in high school and Jesse was playing at UIC. Pretty sloppy play by both teams so far. Sherrick with the first Slim's bucket over three minutes into the game. It seems like both teams are a bit on edge to start the game. Appreciate it, man. Dez out top. Pischke defending him. Dez pulls. Hits the three. 8-2. Let's eat. Slims calls their first timeout. Let's eat with the ball down low and Xavier gets the dish and finishes with a nice reverse layup. Sherrick with the rebound, outlets to Pischke. Pischke on the break, hits the layup to cut the lead to 10-7. Pischke on the drive, kicks out to Julian Lynch, to Mike Clark in the corner, three up and good! Tie game. Sherrick in the post, foul, no call. Save to Jaden Henderson. Henderson on the break, Eurostep layup, let's eat back up two. Game is getting a little bit chippy as they often do. Neither Binions are here tonight. So Julian's dad, Wallace Lynch, came out of retirement to join the team. And Slim's sub player, Mike Ernst, coming out as well. Both of these guys play with a lot of intensity and in their youth, each of them were known to get in some skirmishes. Clark inbounds to Slim, Slim back to Clark. Clark for the lead, misses. And this game is not getting any prettier to watch. Air ball. Ernst to Slim, cutting down low for the easy two. Air ball again, but Xavier is there for the putback to give the lead back to Let's Eat. Calvin off the Simpson screen, indecisive turnover. Let's Eat on the break. Good defense by Clark forces an ugly turnover as this game just stays about as beautiful as Charlize Theron in the movie Monster. Now the chippiness is getting into the Hendersons as they speak to the refs and each other. Another turnover. Rebound Jesse, outlet to Jaden for the layup. 16-12 with two minutes and change has got to be one of the lowest scoring affairs this season for either team. Mike Clark on the drive, dumps it to Sherrick for the reverse layup. Sherrick jogs the ball up, kicks it back to Mike. Mike drives and a slow motion hesitation for a layup and the lead. Slims goes into halftime, lucky to be up 18-16.
After a couple quick ones by Let's Eat, Slims is down. 21-18 early in the second half. Pishke with the ball. Dez defends under the screen. Pishke keeps it. And oh, what a move! 21-20, Let's Eat! Mike Clark inbounds to Slim. Slim hits the easy bucket while Let's Eat was still trying to figure out if the ball was even inbounded. Slim to Pishke. Pishke drives. Dez flops. Pishke step back. Cans the three. Pishke to Clark. Back to Pishke. Pishke deep three. Bucket. Tie game at 28. Sherrick looks like a giant. Foul. No call. Hits the shot to take the lead. Pishke brings it up. Drive, step back for three. Tough, tough. That's a tough shot. Slims up five. Let's eat. Calls the timeout. Xavier steals the pass from Pishke. Takes it in for the layup. Slims now up one. Calvin drives the ball. Turns it over. Let's eat. Gets a technical foul for taunting Calvin after the steal. What a dumb move. While you're up two with a breakaway during the final stretch of the game. Misses one. And two. Big misses with a chance to tie the game up. Calvin across the lane. Lazy pass to Sherrick. Xavier with the steal. And the break to put Let's Eat up six. Slim underneath to Sherrick. Foul. Basket. Good. They say the foul is on the floor. That's a tough break. Sherrick hits one of two. Five point game. Pishke brings it up. Slim, moving screen. Pishke hits the three. Did they call the moving screen? No. They say Jaden grabs Sherrick's jersey before the shot. Sherrick to the line for the one and the bonus. Sherrick misses the front end. Let's Eat brings it up with two minutes to go in the game. Let's Eat calls a timeout. And apparently the refs have had enough of the complaining and trash talking and called the game with Let's Eat up seven and just over a minute and a half to play. Game over, Slims drops to two and one, and Let's Eat goes on to three and oh. One thing I was happy about last night about the other team was that um, Jesse's knees didn't seem to be bothering him at all. And... You know, he was hopping around and bouncing like good old Jess, and I, I love to see it, even though he was our competitor last night. Uh, you know, it's all love. We've known each other for 30 years. He's had a rough couple of years. Uh, his older son just passed away uh, a couple months ago, his oldest son. Um, his son, Jaden, who was on the team last night, uh, his mom passed away last year. So they've had a rough go of it, and uh, it's good to see them back out on the floor. It's nice. So what did you think of the game again? Let's eat the other night. Um, I think we kind of beat ourselves. I think we let them play, make us play faster on offense than we needed to. Yeah. And I thought, like, a lot – I wouldn't say we rushed them. I thought we got a lot of good looks, but there's times where I felt like we were rushed when we really didn't need to feel that way. I feel the same way. Like one particular one I can think of is when Jaden was guarding me in the post and the first time I got the ball and I turned around and I shot it real quick mm -hmm. and he didn't even try to block the shot. Yeah, so that's what I thought I thought our biggest problem on offense was is that. And then defensively, I don't think we were that bad. I don't think so either. I think uh, we kind of underestimated that a couple of them being able to shoot. Like yeah. that kid with the dreads, what's his name? Uh, Dez. Dez? Yeah. I didn't know he could shoot as well as he did. And then who's the, who's the other kid that hit? Xavier. Th he hit three in a row. He hit two on Calvin and then he hit a bank three on Mike. Yeah, Xavier. It just plays hard, which makes up every other aspect of his game. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they all play hard. So yeah. I'm not gonna sit here and say like, we definitely should have won that game, but we could have won that game. Yeah, we made a hard on ourselves for yeah. sure. Me and Calvin and your dad in particular, we all missed some easy buckets too. Yeah, my dad was mad. Yeah, he was like, I can't believe I missed those layups. Like, I, like <laughs> the one that just slipped out of town, like, 
I don't know what the whole deal with that first half was like. Both teams coming by a bucket. I know. I think we were both. I mean, I don't know why we would make them play too fast, but I felt like they were too. My dad really didn't know who was on the team, and I was telling him like, I was like, for not playing together, we play really well together, and we're really good. I really like Common's friend. Mike. Mike, I really. Yeah, like he's tough. Friend. Yeah, he's real. He's a real smart ball player. Yeah, the change in speed that he has is so different. Yeah, and not a lot of people are used to like. Yeah. The slow Euro step. So many people don't see that a lot. Yeah. He uses it so well. But you watch this play here, and we're coming down on a two-on-one. You're dribbling the ball up, mm -hmm. and as we're coming up, they got like a guy that's like five eight, trying yeah. in between us, right? We, we get down inside of the lane, and you throw me a bounce pass, and I, I should have caught it cleanly. I kind of fumbled it. I don't have really good hands. So, and then on top of it, I missed the layup. I should have hit the layup. But what you can do, you know, and I'm, maybe you already know this, but in the future, if you got like a 5'8 guy in between you and a 6'6 guy, uh -huh. you don't throw a low bounce pass where like I had to catch it here, yeah. and I fumble it, and I bring it up. Meanwhile, he comes over and stands like right where yeah. I need to bend my knees to go up. The best thing would have been to do either just pull up and shoot and I could have got the rebound if yeah. you miss because I'm already ahead of the game. Or you could just throw like a little loft pass like mm -hmm. you're shooting a floater mm -hmm. and then I can catch it like this going up towards the basket versus going down yeah. and then up and then he's not gonna get that. Yeah, definitely. My brothers definitely beat up on me a lot. Also life, but definitely in basketball, uh, they would like kind of bully me. We'd play 21 out in the driveway and I would never get a point. But it definitely helped just playing with the older guys and their friends too. Uh, I think I'm a really good uh, pass first point guard that uh, can find teammates and make my teammates better. Uh, but then I think I can get you a bucket when needed. I'm playing at University of Dubuque in Iowa. Uh, I was really excited because I've been to like you guys playing Mon or Sunday mornings or stuff like that. I've been there a couple times. I was also excited to play with uh, Adam because last summer I played in his one of his leagues that he's in a couple times with him and it was it's always nice to play with him on your team instead of getting messed up by him sometimes. Uh, and I was excited to play for Calvin this last time before we went off to college this summer. Now there's two reasons why I chose Mike to play on this team. Number one, he's exactly the type of ball player that I like to play with because he's capable of scoring, but he doesn't have to score to be effective. He's always looking for the best shot that the team can get in any given point. I also wanted him for the team because, plain and simple, Calvin plays much better with Mike on the floor. He's always much more confident and much more comfortable taking shots when he's getting the pass from Mike and I want to see my boy do well. I've known Calvin since sixth grade, and then I think freshman year was when we became really close. These last four years of high school, me and Cal were best friends through all of it. We're heading into week four's game right now, and I found out that I have COVID, so obviously I won't be playing in the game, which totally sucks, but the worst part is that I can't work for this week, and when you're self-employed, you don't get paid time off. Two weeks ago, I couldn't play because of my elbow. Uh, I'm taking Calvin on, a, on his college orientation visit next week. And then in two weeks, we're going to visit my cousin in California. So I'm gonna miss half of the games of our regular season. It's just disappointing and disheartening that I was so excited to play in this season we got a team coming up called the Han Stoppables. I don't know who they are. I don't know anything about them. So they're two and one just like us. And uh, I wish I was gonna be there to help the guys out, but I think we got it. I think we can take care of them. Wait a minute. I do know this team. I played on this team years ago, but the only player that's still left is the bald guy with the headband and he can really shoot. I know exactly what our team is thinking here. We're thinking there's a bunch of 12 year olds with a couple of old men. We're going to come out here and kill them. And we're going to be wrong. Mike Clark up to Pischke for three. Book it. 
Hishke with the rebound. Brings it up himself. Up to David Jr. for the layup. Number four with a nice drive and turnaround to cut the Slims lead to 12-9. Cross court for three to tie it up. The Han Stoppables came to play. And another three. Pischke on the drive. Nice reverse layup. Han Stoppables with the ball up 17-16. Kick it out for three. It's good to put Slims down by four. Sherrick with the spin in the post for the layup and one. David Sr. into Wallace in the post. Foul, no call, hits the layup anyway. Han Stoppables walk it up the court, swing it around for yet another three. The Slims team better start respecting their outside shot. Calvin for three, no good. Sherrick with the tip to end the half, 30-25, Han Stoppables in the lead. Pischke brings the ball up. Nobody stops him, and he cuts the deficit to three. Mike on the drive. Drops to Calvin for the lefty layup. Pischke out top. Kicks it over to Julian for three. Looks like the Slims team might be heating up. Calvin with the rebound. To Mike. To Julian. To Dave Jr. To Pischke. Back to Jr. for three. Ties the game up at 32. Pischke, deep three. Book it! Slims up three. Han Stoppables bring the ball up. Mike tips it to Julian. Julian back to Mike for the breakaway layup. Pischke, step back. Tough shot. Pischke walks it up. Long range three. Book it! Pischke brings it up. Drive, step back off one foot. You gotta be kidding me. Slim's now up 15. Wallace brings it up. Hits Sherrick for the layup. He looks like he's auditioning for winning time season three. Dave Sr. to Pischke. Deep three, you know it's in. Sherrick for three. Wallace tips it in. Slim's goes on for an easy win while Slim is at home with his first bout of COVID. I'm on my way back to work uh, after being out for a week with COVID. Uh, my COVID was, <clears throat> like most people, pretty unsubstantial. My girlfriend had a hard time with it, though. She was in the immediate care and the ER the next day. And right now, it's 7.30 in the morning. My first appointment is at 8, so I'm hoping that I can get to work in time to uh, give myself a cleanup on my face because my beard is a little bit overgrown right now. And the worst thing about being self-employed or being a barber in general is that all of my appointments from last week had to be uh, shifted over to this week. It's the worst thing about taking any time off, whether planned or unplanned, is when you come back to work. It's just a nightmare. It's you're trying to cut as many people's hair as you possibly can, both for your pocketbook and to keep your customers happy. Now I'm going into work and I'm sort of thinking about the basketball game this Wednesday, but not much. I'm not even gonna play. Calvin and I will be at Indiana University for his orientation. Oh, 7.30 p.m., leaving work right now. It's nice to see everybody again, but I am beat. Uh, I'd like to go home and go to sleep, but it is my girlfriend's son, Tyler's one year anniversary today of being crushed between two cars. Before his year anniversary, he was able to run a 5K, so that's unbelievable. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see him and tell him I think he's doing a good job. And it's amazing that he's made it this far in less than a year. Amazing he's alive. Uh, born 
on the north side of Chicago. Uh, came up at Cabrini Green, my early days, and uh, ended up moving to the south side of Chicago till I was, when I was six, ended up staying on the south side of Chicago till I was like 15, moved to Elgin, and the rest is history. Went to high school at Elgin Larkin. Had a good high school career over there at Larkin, so uh, set a few records and got on out of there. <laughs> I remember playing against Shake in high school at our gym. There was a time during the game that I missed a shot. He went down and dunked it. Then we came back down. We missed another shot. They went down and he dunked it again. And our coach is at me in the timeout saying, why don't you get up there and block that dunk? And I'm just looking at him like, I appreciate the confidence in me that you think that I could accomplish that. But let me tell you something. Best case scenario, I get dunked on. Worst case scenario, I jump with him, foul him, hit him so hard that we both fall down and we're both out for the season. Well, uh, I first started off, you know, my career at Elgin Community College. And uh, I know a lot of people thought you know, I should go play D1, but, you know, my grades wasn't the best. And then after that, I transferred to Fort Hayes State in Kansas. And a lot of people were probably asked, well, how did you end up in Kansas? <laughs> well, they did. They did some heavy recruiting. And once I uh, visited the university, I instantly fell in love with the campus. And then, you know, the roster that was coming back and the guys that were coming in, to me, I felt like it was the perfect situation for me because I could finally play my true position. It was obviously the right choice. We, we had a perfect season. We didn't lose a game, so. So your, your junior year, you won the whole thing? Yep. 34-0 my junior year, and I was MVP of the national championship game. <laughs> Taken away, this is Simpson uncontested. Four now for Simpson. Too long a pass by Miner, and Simpson steps in and takes it to the basket. That was probably the most complete game I ever played. I missed one shot the whole game. Wow. So, you know, you know when they talk about uh, tunnel vision or being in a zone. I was, you know, I was, I was completely locked in. I was completely focused on the task at hand because it was almost like I was in my own world and I could hear nothing on the outside. It was just like me in my head. <laughs> it was like me in my head. And all I was telling myself was, Shake, you can't mess up today. He's pushing against Goldston down in the block there. <laughs> Move. Simpson is the guy for whom the Northern Kentucky has not been able to find the answer. And that's all I was thinking in my head. My mom is watching. She never saw me play rest her soul. She never saw me play in person. And knowing that she was watching, I mean, if you watched the game, you'd be like, yeah, you were completely locked in. And so I remember at one point in the game, the guy that I was guarding, they was touting him as, you know, the top five shooting guards in Division Two, And <laughs> I was saying to myself, like, this guy? That move speaks for itself. 20 for Simpson. And we end up winning the championship, and the rest is history. 34 and 0, and the Division Two national champions and the genuine Chevrolet players of the game are Andre McClendon from Northern Kentucky and Sherrick Simpson from Fort Hayes State. Thanks very much, Bill. With me is Jack Doyle, the chair of the NCAA Division II Men's Basketball Committee, to make the presentation of the National Championship Trophy. Uh, my first, first uh, country I went to was Iceland. When I came out of college, you know, we didn't have the YouTubes, we didn't have the AAUs, you know, we didn't really have the exposure and the support that, you know, most of these youngsters have today. So I was pretty much on my own learning. The reason I went to Iceland was because my agent, he would come back with these countries, these offers of different countries that, you know, he had for me to play in and me not having any experience 
knowledge of overseas professional basketball. I was just thinking of the country. Like, nope, I was just turning down country after country. No, I don't want to go there. Nope, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there, which was, I look back, was a mistake. So it had came down to the final hour. He was like, bro, you got to sign somewhere. All the country, all the teams are signing players. And so I ended up in Iceland and actually ended up being probably one of the funnest years of my life. And so after Iceland, I ended up going to the Middle East, went to Israel. I, I didn't stay in Israel the whole season. I ended up leaving. After I left Israel, I ended up going to Portugal. Uh, played three years in P Portugal, always in the top five in scoring. Uh, always made the all-star team. And then after Portugal, I had signed a contract to play in France, probably my biggest contract at that, up until that point. And I ended up having a car accident a month after I signed that contract, which actually put me down for probably the, the next year and a half. After the accident, I fractured my pelvis after I got back strong and able to play again, I ended up going back to Portugal. Everybody wanted to see if I could still play the way that I played, so I accepted the contract in the second division after playing two years in the top division. Made it to the championship, we didn't win, and then the following year after that, I ended up signing in Amsterdam. Amsterdam was fun, ended up winning the championship over there. So I drive over to the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts. Now, remember, this is where the likes of Michael Jordan, Kareem, Magic, Bird, all of these guys are. I said, this can't be real, man. No way. <laughs> and I'm like, where is this jersey at? So I walk down these steps. I see all these little kids looking at these NBA relics in the case. And then I see my jersey on the wall. I said, you got, I think I, I think I went to tears. And I go over and I look at my jersey. I remember it's, my jersey was right next to Steph Curry's Davidson jersey on the wall. And I'm sitting there staring at this jersey on the wall. I'm like, wow, this jersey is still. Now this was 96 when they took my jersey. We're in now in 2011. And I was like, well, I guess they're just gonna leave it up there. I said, the only Division II jersey in the building. So I felt really good about it, and I'd never forget these little kids ran up to me and they were like, is that your jersey? I said, yeah, that's my jersey. Huntley Men's Basketball League Week 5. Slim's Barbershop 3-1 are taking on the winless Blue Ballers. Calvin and Kevin Slimko are at Calvin's College Orientation. The Blue Ballers haven't won yet, but they have played the toughest schedule so far. Arnav Jane starts out the game with a three. Tarek with the turnaround, good. Julian Lynch for three, hits it. And the Ballers are hitting everything. They didn't plan on losing tonight. Julian for three, knocks it down. Blue Baller, 16, Julian, 6. Tarek out top, drives, hits the layup to double up Slims, 22-11. Julian on the wing into his brother Anthony to bring it to a five-point game. Wallace for three. Slims took that initial punch to the face and has been able to get back in this game. Tarek drives on Mike, stops, pops off one foot, bucket. Slims just doesn't seem to have an answer for this kid. Slims is playing a little better now that Wallace has checked in. His intensity rubs off on all the other players on his team. Mike, Julian, and Wallace combine for the steal. Wallace up to Mike. Mike with the and one. David Jr. with a strong baseline drive. The young guys coming out tough in the second half to put Slims up five. Mike on the drive, draws all the defenders. What a move! Dish to Dave Sr. Slims up six. Tarek on the drive, bucket. Tarek, three, he is having a game. Slims down one, the ballers trying to take advantage of the age on Slims. Dave Sr. at 48 years old forces the five second violation. Game tied, five seconds left, 
Wallace for three. No good. Gets his own rebound. Whistle. The refs determined that the foul against the Ballers was after the final buzzer, and we head to overtime. What an unbelievable game. Anthony on the wing. Drives on Arnav. Bucket. Slims up two. Who else but Tarek for three? So far in overtime, it's been the Anthony Lynch versus Tarek show as Anthony puts Slims up one. Dave Sr. in the post. He's just too big. A Slims foul puts Tarek on the line with the game tied. He's got 43 so far tonight. Oh, we missed the first one. Hard to believe this team hasn't won a game yet. Tarek hits the second free throw to put the ballers up one. A blue ballers foul has Slim's best shooter, Adam Pischke, at the free throw line. Down one with 2.9 seconds to go in overtime. He hits the first one. Tie game. He hits the second one. Slim's up one. Blue ballers to inbound. Throws to half court. Dave Sr. with a steal. Slims narrowly escapes game four with a victory, and the Blue Ballers go home still winless. They were playing big. You know, we had got down on them, and they were playing probably their best game they ever played, and then, you know, we turned up the defense a little bit. Uh, we hit some trades, you know, drew the defense, and we got some big shots down the stretch and ended up winning. But, you know, for the most part, it was just like he said, it was the trash talk. Like, I'm like, who are these cats, man? And I said, here we go again. <laughs> they want to beat the shit out of these old guys. So, but no, it was a good game. We, it, it showed, you know, I, I think that at that point, I started to develop trust in the young guys, too, after we pulled that win out. It was most of the young guys that really, you know, carried us down the stretch in that game. But it just took them a second to, like, because we started slow, and I'm looking at them like, come on, man, what are, what are we doing out here? We lose it to these guys. And then they eventually picked it up, and uh, we were able to win the game. So, you know, Wallace, we used to compete against Wallace. Being rivals, he went to Elgin, we went to Larkin, and we played against each other. And then in the summertime, we played together. You know, so it was, you know, Elgin had a lot of, a lot of players back in the days, and, you know, I've known them guys for a long time. On our team? Yeah. I would probably have to say Wallace. You know, he's always been that way, you know, whatever league we played in, and he's kind of like developed that reputation, you know. they, Like he's the guy that's looking for the tough guy <laughs> or the guy that's talking shit. And that's, while that's his role, you know, unconsciously he does it. You know, I don't think he constantly does it, it's just who he is. And so, yeah, I would give that to Wally. Oh, hands down, Wallace. <laughs> hands down, Wallace. He likes to talk trash and start trash for no reason, you know. With our kids growing up and playing together, he had a hand in how David plays as well. You know, so I see some of the same tendencies in Wallace that, you know, in David that Wallace has, you know. So, uh, you know, some of that, that deviant kind of sneaky play, you know, aggressive play that Wallace has, David has that same in him. It brought another aspect of the game to my kid that I wasn't able to give him. I didn't really know Wallace in high school. We played against him a couple of times and all I knew of him was that he was probably the most intense player I'd ever played against up until that point. I never saw anybody hold his teammates accountable in the way that he did before the game, during the game, after the game. He's a madman. On top of being intense, Wallace could just play. He was really good. Sherrick won the Elgin Courier News Player of the Year our senior year, but a case could have been made for Wallace to be right there with him. Now, I really got to know Wallace when we were on the Laird Funeral Home team together. After the games, we would always go out for pizza and beer. He'd always tell me about everything that he did when he was growing up, like how many people he knocked out at the Elgin YMCA while playing basketball or volleyball. And then he would always show me videos of his sons Anthony and Julian playing in AAU ball, and I was real impressed. Now, Julian probably didn't get the high-flying hops that his pops had, but he's tough. He's good around the rim. He's got great hands playing defense. He can post up. He does a lot of things that people don't want to do. He's always playing hard. I was surprised at how good his hands are on defense. He really gets a lot of deflections and a lot of steals on the dribble. He was the first one of the Lynches to join the team for the summer. Anthony and Wallace decided not to play to begin the year. 
then after a couple of games, Wallace contacted me and asked me if he could still join the team, which of course I said yeah. After Wallace's first game with the team, I asked Julian how it went, and Julian said, yeah, it went better than I expected. I didn't get yelled at as much as I thought I would. The week after Wallace joined the team, I went down to Anthony's college graduation party. As I was leaving the party, Anthony asked me if we still needed anybody to play. Now, at that point, we had nine guys on the team, so we didn't really need anybody to play, but I said I'd put him on the roster, and I'm sure we'd need him because we were probably going to be short guys with people traveling and whatnot, and then also having all three playoff games in one night, so we needed all the firepower we could get. Now, Anthony is a heck of a ball player. He led his high school team at Elgin Larkin IV in the state. He started out his college career at Lewis University, where Adam Pischke also went, and then after his sophomore year transferred to where I went to college, Benedictine University, his junior year was affected by COVID, and he chose not to play his senior year. Now, I don't know how much he's been playing. His first game playing with us was last week. I know that he can play better, but I think he did a pretty good job for the first time coming out. Welcome to week six of the Huntley Park District Men's League. We have Slim's Barbershop versus the Chromie Homies. I know in the list of teams, homies is spelled with an S, but I'm going to announce this game like it ends with a Z. The homies are missing one of their best players in Zach Leahy. The Slims team welcomes back Kevin and Calvin Slimco. Kevin has missed three of the five games this season. Pishke creates space. Bucket. Pishke pulls up and he's up 6-2. Bergeron pulls up from three. Big man with range. The Chromie homies came to play today, working a lot of plays through the 6'8 Bergeron. Pischke brings it up. Oh, what a move. Halfway through the first half, and Slims is only up one. Pischke is too good. Make that up three. Sherrick with the steal. Layup. Make that up five. Bergeron with the rebound and the dunk! Dave Jr. on the drive, tries to answer dunk for dunk, Slim with the tip. Mike Clark drives, dumps to Slim for the easy bucket. Mike on the drive and nice finish. Slim's back up 12. Bergeron with the three. He's having a good game, but the homies have no answers for the Slim's barbershop team. Slim's goes into halftime up 44. 24. Mike Clark to Slim in the post. Quick spin for the layup. Adam Pischke behind the back. Double crossover. Step back for three. And this game has turned into a rout. And the game ends with Slim's ahead. 92-53. But it seemed a lot closer than 39 points. So I went to Elgin Larkin High School in Elgin, Illinois and graduated in 1992. My uh, junior year, we went to the Sweet 16, and as well as my senior year, we went to the Sweet 16. You know, we were tough. Um, again, we were athletic. We had a lot of athletic players, but when it came down to crunch time, you know, we just didn't have the players. That were, and I guess you could say that for both years, because we kind of ended up the same way. And I played football before I played basketball. Um, had a, a love for football, and then once I started playing basketball, that love got, you know, bigger than football. But I, and then when I was a sophomore in high school, I had a, a seizure playing football. Um, bumped heads with a guy, and this was preseason, with no pads or nothing. We just, we bumped heads, you know, running routes. And the next day I had a seizure. I was 16, it was the summer. That stopped me from playing football. Uh, no, they didn't. Um, my mom didn't play. Um, my dad didn't play. He was more of a street guy for the most part, you know, um, as far as I know. Um, but my brother did. My brother was seven years older than me, um, and he played. And I used to watch him play. He played at my high school. Um, he was a track star as well. So I was, you know, he was an athlete, and I was all over him, you know, following him, going to his basketball games, going to his football games, going to his track meets and all that. So that was, he was kind of my uh, mentor, if you will, when it came to sports, just because that he was doing everything too, you know. And he was an all-state triple jumper. And he was getting ready to go down state 
and the week before he was going downstate, he got caught smoking cigarettes or whatever it was out in the park somewhere by his basketball coach who then told on him and he could not go go down state and change his life. You know, that changed his life. He no longer was in the sports, graduated high school and you know, that was it. Um, started running the streets and living his life in the streets for the most part. But um, he eventually turned around and got, you know, started, he's working for the city, he's doing well now. But um, yeah, it was a devastating blow to him and me because I was expecting him to go down state and triple jump. Um, no pressure because he wouldn't let me go the wrong path, you know. Um, he was in the streets and I, again, no different than anything else, was trying to follow him, you know, but he wouldn't let me. So thankfully he kept me out of it. So yeah, after I graduated um, from Larkin, I went to Rock Valley. I played my first year, averaged 15 points or so. My second season, I wasn't eligible the first semester and then played the second semester. And played the second semester and was one of the top 20 junior college players in the state. So I played in an all-star game. Uh, for me, it was another accomplishment, you know. Um, when I was in high school, I was nominated at McDonald's All-American, so I was one of the top 1,500 in the country. Um, and then to go to college and be, a, and be nominated or play in the All-Star game as one of the top 20 in the state. In junior college, yeah, it's junior college, I get it, but um, still, you know, there's a ton of junior colleges in the state, and then um, there's a ton of players in junior college in the state. So to be one of the top 20 at the time was, for me, an accomplishment, so. I'm a carpenter by trade, and I'm a construction superintendent. Um, so a general contractor superintendent. Um, so I oversee a lot of CPS schools. I do a lot of CPS work. I do, uh, I've built houses, I've built roads and bridges. Like what have you worked on throughout the house? Oh goodness. Um, well, the patio, I did the patio, redid the patio outside to put in permeable papers. Me and the, the boys helped me do that. My sons helped me do that. Um, I've started my workshop in the basement, built a bench, workbench, some drawers, um, that type of stuff in the basement where I can store my tools. Um, redid the front driveway. Uh, it was asphalt, uh, tore up the asphalt, put concrete in. Um, I don't know what else I'm going to do. I got a few other projects that I'm going to do. My wife says, um, you know, that I'm going to be doing, I, we'll see how it goes, but yeah. I'm 22 years old. Uh, yeah, so right now I'm just in school at ECC. Um, I'm just a student there and then I'm also working at St. Joseph Hospital uh, as a PCT. And uh, at ECC I'm trying to get into the nursing program. Uh, so that's where I'm at right now, just waiting on that nursing program and acceptance. I played in high school at uh, South Elgin, South Elgin High School. Uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. Oh yeah, I guess Julian, yeah, okay, so Julian was with me, I forgot. He's, uh, so he's two years older, but yeah, I played with Julian my sophomore year. He was a senior, that was fun. Uh, he played with us in summer league. It was nice to rekindle that basketball um, IQ with each other and just playing with each other, it was fun. The Week 7 matchup today is Slim's Barbershop versus the Old Heads. The Old Heads come into this game with three victories. Slim's Barbershop is 5-1. and one. Sherrick with a steal and also started Slim's out with a three. You can tell with each passing week that Sherrick's legs are getting more lively. Pishke with a couple threes in a row. Mike hits Dave Jr. with a dime. Pishke with a beautiful step back. He's played great since the third game. Slims goes into halftime up 12. Dave Sr. with the three. The big kid on the old heads is showing he can hit from inside and out. Sherrick with a great drive, showing those legs still have some mileage left on them. Sherrick hits Pishke on the cut for the layup. Slims up big. And this game is all but over. Let's get the big kid a dunk. Slims Barbershop with the win. Going to six and one. The old heads drop to three and four. Got a big game this coming Wednesday night, the 3rd of August. Going up against the dad bods. We're in a 
basically a four-way tie for first place. Uh, all things could go awry. We got us versus them. If we beat them and Let's Eat loses to Lifetime Elite, then we tie for first place and we get a bye in the first round of the playoffs. If we lose and Let's Eat wins, then we might end up being fourth place and have to play the fifth seed or the third seed, whatever. It's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy uh, Wednesday night at the Huntley Park District. The dad bods have Paul Kowalson, AKA White Chocolate of the Chicagoland area. Uh, Pat Armstrong, who you cannot leave alone. He's gonna get his points. Uh, Davon, I uh, can't remember the rest of the guys' names, but of course, we got the biggest matchup of the century, which is our version of MJ. O Sherek Simpson, o número 17, o Sangalhos, tem algumas parecenças fisionómicas com o Michael Jordan, não tem? Algumas. Até usa aquela. Shake against the LeBron James of Lifetime, as he was featured on every basketball repost page, Ryan Harris. Ryan Harris kind of looks like LeBron, he kind of walks like LeBron, but he's about seven inches shorter and shoots better than LeBron. Man, it's going to be a bad. The other thing about this game is it's kind of. Uh, weird for me, but it's going to be the last time that Calvin's playing with me in this league because he's going on vacation with his mom next week for the playoffs, which is going to hurt our chances in the playoffs because we need as many players as we can get with the potential of playing three games that night. And, you know, he's been playing pretty well for us, so it's going to be tough uh, knowing that tomorrow's the last time that I'm going to get to play with him for a while. Uh, because he's going away to college and I'm going to miss him, obviously. So, um, you know, it's going to be tough. Go to the, no, that way, pal. Shoot it, buddy, shoot it. Hey, look at this, Kev. Look at that. Look at that. My kids were not that into basketball when they were little, when they were growing up. They would play in the in the yard and they thought they liked it, but they weren't ever like, oh, let's go play basketball. My older son, Julius, really didn't gravitate towards team sports. He ran track and cross country. And Calvin, my younger boy, always wanted to play football because the, the school that he was going to go to high school at is a perennial powerhouse in football. They've won bunch of state championships. Matter of fact, his senior year, they won the state championship. It's probably the best high school sporting event I've ever seen. Uh, they beat, at Cary Grove High School, they beat East St. Louis. Ended up always, the last couple of years he played being the quarterback on teams with kids that were being brought up who were in sixth grade, but they were deemed too heavy to carry the ball against these other teams that were coming in that only had one team in the whole town, but they were playing in the B division. And they'd have kids that were like 14 years old and already looking like men at 180 pounds versus a sixth grader who was just a little kid that was heavy weighing 180 pounds. And Calvin playing quarterback always had to run for his life as soon as he got the ball. So when high school came, he was like, I think I'm just gonna focus on basketball. With COVID coming in at the end of his sophomore year, that was when he was really starting to come into his own as a, as a really good ball player. That progression sort of being stifled by COVID kind of hurt him going into his junior year. And they did not even play a full season that year in high school. And coming into his senior year, kind of needed to get that confidence back rolling that he had at the end of his sophomore year. And it took a little while. Now, knowing that he was 17 graduating high school and watching him gain 40 pounds from the end of his high school season till the time that he went to college really made me think oh boy we could have kept him one more year and but another year of development and gain that 40 pounds really would have helped him in what his weaker points were in the game i grew up around basketball my whole life my dad was a coach at Jacobs High School where we eventually went. He didn't coach me as a varsity player, but he coached us as freshmen. Um, my brother, Mark, was eight years older than me. I always wanted to be just like him, so I followed him around playing basketball. And he was a big man, so 
I learned how to pass the ball into the post and pass the ball to anybody because he was shooting no matter where he got it. So we're celebrating after the game because it was a tough fought victory. And Calvin comes running out onto the court. And he goes, Uncle Mock, Uncle Mock, Uncle Mock. And my brother goes, yeah, Calvin, because he was excited and he thought Calvin was going to tell him how good he played. And when he said, yeah, Calvin, what? And Calvin goes, do you ever pass my dad the ball? Uh, you know, he is a bit of an authority figure. Some might even say he's touched by God. You know, even though it's warmer in here, it's still cool. And they can feel it down there on the floor. Slimco inside, great position. And he gives the Falcons the lead. He hit the winner in the BYU game, got a put back off a free throw. He's uh, come along. I like his improvement. And others might just say that he's all meat. Strong kid, 6'5", 195 pounder. A little slim, but it's all meat. Now we joke around with each other. We pick on each other. We make fun of each other. And our sister Jill is in the middle, so she kind of got off easy because she would team up with Mark to make fun of their little brother Kevin, or I would team up with Jill to make fun of Mark because he is an authority figure. Now that we're getting older, my brother and I can make fun of my sister Jill because she's turning into our mother. So it's all working out. When I played in high school, our team had a lot of people who could really score. So I led our conference in scoring, but I didn't lead our team for the season in scoring. Brian Hinkle was on my team, and he led our team throughout the entire season. I just led us in the conference games, and we were right there neck and neck. Uh, Todd Weiss was on our team. He was fifth in the conference in scoring, and I played the point. So I set our school record for assists, but it was really pretty easy with those guys shooting, and even our role players were pretty good shooters too. I never thought that somebody would beat my assist record while also leading the conference in scoring, but Johnny Moran beat my assist record, led the conference in scoring, and also averaged more points than I did. But he was a special player, so I can't be mad at that. It wasn't defense. <laughs> but you know what? I, I, I go back to when I coached, and of course when your dad coached, and, and when you guys played, and I, I know sometimes in my mind maybe I exaggerate it, but I know you and Brian and Todd, between the three of you probably averaged close to 60 points a game. Plus, you, you know, we had three of you guys who could score 20 in any game. I don't know if any team that scored like at the rate you guys did. And you, were, you weren't the greatest team in the world. You were very good. But it wasn't like you were state champions. But, you know, <laughs> the, the object of the game is to score points. And we did a pretty good job of that. And I don't think I've seen a high school team shoot free throws like you guys did. I mean, it was... I think we had three or four guys that were over 80%, I believe. Of course, you know, as a parent, one of the most exciting games, and I need to give you a lot of credit because you got a lot of assists the game when Brian scored 48, which is still the Fox Valley record. And he scored 48 points and against Central. And so the next game, they were intent. Brian was not going to score. That really ticked them off. So they really put all the pressure on Brian. He, I always tease him because for the year he averaged 25 against Central. He had 48 and two. And he wasn't even upset after that game because Todd Weiss hit like six or seven threes in the first quarter. Uh, some of the guys that you played with, you guys were playing recess at, in elementary school and keeping score of the game for how many different recesses in football and basketball or whatever, and are still friends, which really is, it's really amazing, but it's good. It's a good thing. My brother, who I was talking about earlier, had a great high school career, ended up uh, at the time being the school's all-time leading scorer. He was one of the first two basketball players to be inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame at Jacobs, which was 35 years after the school was opened. And um, he went to the Air Force Academy, which is a Division I program, but it's not a huge Division I program. They were pretty good while he was there. He did not really get to play much his freshman year, played some here and there his sophomore year and played a lot his junior and senior year. And watching that, watching him knowing that he was much more physically developed than I was at that age, and watching him not play very much his freshman year, 
I kind of was influenced that and thought I wanted to go to a smaller school and play. So I went to Benedictine University, which is a Division three school. So you were telling us about uh, Kevin Slimko. Yeah, Kevin, uh, Kevin's been a four-year starter for us, at least on and off anyway. But uh, yeah, they've, uh, Kevin and Josh are roommates, and uh, they're a little bit different but uh, <laughs> in a lot of ways. But what you know what? Uh, they're good. It's always nice for a coach to say. We got a lot of good kids on our team, and, uh, and Kevin's really stepped it up this senior year. Uh, we needed him to step it up, and he's done it. So you ready? Born ready. <laughs> I'm kind of sad, man. This is our last game together. For the summer. For the summer, yeah. But, you know, I mean, this is also means that you're leaving for school soon, too. True. So what do you think about tonight's game? I don't know. It'll be a good game, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, if we win and Let's Eat loses, then we get a bye the first game. Wait, what if we win and Let's Eat wins? Then we come in third. Oh, because we lost to Let's Eat? Yeah. Our game is big. Lifetime plays Let's Eat on the other court the same time as us. I did a fly was workout earlier today. What's that mean? Like jump workout. Are you going to be able to jump tonight? I'm either going to be springy or retired. I don't know what it was. I've been so excited to play in this game all week. And uh, today when I got home from work, I just, I could have slept till tomorrow morning. My legs feel, my legs don't hurt for once, but they feel like they're dead. All right, let's get it. The week eight matchup of Slims versus Dad Bods is a heavyweight matchup. The older guys on the Slims team have played against these guys in several different leagues, and it's always a marquee game. With the Laird Funeral Home team, Sherrick, Dave, Slim, and Wallace have gone against them many times. The last time Slim and Shake have played against them was a loss with Team Boster in the last Huntley League before the COVID lockdown. They were set to get a rematch in the finals of that league, but the game was canceled when the world shut down. Mike Clark up the court to Dave Sr. in the corner, shoots a three, and it's good. Binion's up 5-0. Harris from deep, no. After buckets from Pischke and Sherrick, the Slims team takes a commanding 10-0 lead. Dave Sr. to Mike on the cut, too strong, but Junior catches the pass and lays it in. The Binions are doing a great job to start this game off on the right foot. Dave Jr. with another block on Harris, but Oates is there for the putback to finally get the dad bods on the scoreboard. Harris wanted the foul on the drive, got a technical instead. Sherrick hits the three to extend the lead to 18 to four. The guys on Slim's bench probably want to get in, but don't want to ruin the momentum. Wow. 20 to four to start the game. Donnell, a quick move in the post for a bucket, cuts the lead to 11. Calvin out to Julian in the corner for three, book it. The Slims team keeping pressure on Harris, trying to make sure he gets nothing easy. That's one of his best looks of the night so far and it was pretty deep. If they let him get hot early, that shot would be in the basket. Calvin to Mike on the wing, and Mike hits the three to punish the 2-3 zone of the dad bods. Swing over to Anthony. Anthony drives. Floater, good. Outlet to Kowalson. Foul. No call. Loose ball. Wallace picks it up for the easy two. Mike Clark gets fouled at the buzzer to the line for three. Now, while you can't say this game is over by any means, it's amazing how well the Slims team has done in shutting down a very potent offense. Mike hits two of his three free throws to extend the lead to 34 to 16. The second half starts and Ryan Harris drives from the wing to get what I believe is his first basket of the night. Dave Sr. pulls back for three and it's good. Paul Kowalson drives in for the pretty layup. Oates for three. Oates might be leading the dad bods in scoring tonight. Harris for three in the corner. That could be their spark. 
The dad bods are clearly playing better this half, but Slims has been able to answer on most of the made shots. Harris for three. He's heating up and the lead is cut to six. Pishke drives, tries to answer. Good, Slims up eight. Harris for three, no good. Gets his own rebound, shoots another. No good. Gets his rebound again and scores the layup. Boy, Slim or Anthony need to get that rebound. Kowalson off the pick and roll, kicks it back for the three, and it's good. Slims with only a five-point lead. Julian Napishki in the corner, answers with a three. Calvin with the ball out top to Pishke in the corner again. Bucket. Slims back up 11. Sherrick on the drive. Kicks out to Calvin. Calvin from three. Good. Huge bucket to keep this lead at or above 10 down the stretch. Once there is only two minutes left, the clock stops on dead balls if the lead is 10 points or below, but keeps running if the lead is over 10. Good team defense right now. Davon takes a deep three. No good. Rebound. Sherrick to Anthony. Anthony to Pischke. Pischke to Calvin. Drive. Pull up. Good. Slims up 14. Sherrick inbounds to Pischke. Pischke fouled and the clock keeps running. So this game is over. Slims wins by 11 and takes a head full of steam into next week's playoff games. Yeah, it was a proud moment for sure. Yeah. It was a proud moment for sure. Um, you know, when you play well yourself, it's one thing. But when your, your kid is right there playing with you well in the same sequence, you know, that's, that's huge. The impact that we made right off the bat in that game was clear. And for it to be the two of us, I mean, it could have been any, any one of us, you know what I'm saying? But for it to be me and him, you know, that was, that was definitely special. This past week, we played the dad bods, which was, uh, boy, it was going to be a matchup, wasn't it? Matchup for the ages. Uh, it was a big trash talking between Ryan Harris and Sherrick. And MJ proved in that game, actually, that he is still the greatest of all time. I think just guarding Ryan and just taking it to him initially right at the beginning of the game, once we took him out of the game, I think that chemistry kind of fell apart and we were able to get up on him and, and win the game. You know, everybody gets to talking during the game, especially that team versus our team. And if you could have seen the years that we've played against these guys, uh, you'd know that that talking trash is not anything new. It started out early, you know, Ryan said, give me the ball. And Ryan had, uh, like, as soon as the game started, he said, give me the ball, this old dude can't guard me. And I looked, <laughs> what I say, I said, that's the funniest shit I heard all year. <laughs> I can't guard you. And he didn't have no points in the first half, so. Sherrick played Great defense on him. I mean, that's a 48-year-old man. And so that's what I liked about the young guys. They were ready to play. I don't think initially they really didn't know what was going on as far as the, the history with all of the guys playing in the league and how bad they want to beat us. And I think it took them like two, three games to really understand like, oh, yeah, this is serious, but I like it. There's a, a real chance that if we make it to the finals that we might be playing against them again. Or I don't want them coming out like, oh, Slim said all this stuff and he ain't even do anything in the game, which would be true. It's going to be a good few games no matter who advances in the playoffs. And, you know, hopefully it's us. I predicted that we weren't going to lose another game after we lost to Let's Eat last time. I still believe that. I don't think we can lose right now. We're kind of clicking pretty good right now. So uh, it's going to be fun. Gonna be a lot of fun. It is now Saturday in the morning. The boys are supposed to go on vacation with their mom and leave in about an hour. They get home next Friday and leave for college the next morning. Calvin to Indiana and Julius to Colorado. Neither one of them is packed at this all. Clothes. Uh, I got a couple other things like uh, the TV, the Xbox. You're gonna pack the TV and Xbox? Yeah. 
here we are on virtually the last day to get packed for Julius. And he's going on vacation in 40 minutes with his mom. And it takes 15 minutes to get to her house. So, what are we doing? Getting up. Getting up. Do you have bags to pack this stuff? Do you know if mom wants you to bring like soft bags or boxes? Or oh, what? she already has a bunch of boxes. And she... Everything in there I want to pack. Everything in the dresser, okay. And then this past Saturday I was playing at an open gym and a kid came over to double team me as I was driving and our feet met up and his, the rubber part of his sole went into the top of my foot and I think it broke my toe. And that's going to be horrible. I'm going to still try to play Wednesday uh, in all three games. That little piggy is not going to market. I worked from about 8 o'clock in the morning today till 7.15 at night. I had a couple of scheduling mishaps that made me have to stay a little bit late at work. Right now, the toe actually feels pretty decent considering I was standing on it for 11 hours today. You know, whatever happens right now, we've had a pretty good season. I'm happy with how the guys have all gelled together. Last game, we had 10 guys. Nobody ever complained about playing time. Nobody was trying to sub somebody out when they didn't want to come out. Nobody was staying in for longer than they were effective, and that's a big deal. Round one of the playoffs, a rematch of the overtime game won by Slim's Barbershop over the Blue Ballers. Obviously, the key for Slim's team tonight is to contain Tarek, who dropped 44 against them last game. Right off the bat, Slim gets caught on Tarek after a screen, and Tarek takes advantage of his age and quickness and drops a pull-up from 20. Sherrick drives, hits Slim on the opposite baseline, and Slim hits for his first bucket of the game. Slim, no look to Anthony in the post. Kick out to Arnov. Arnov from deep. Ballers up five. Julian down to Sherrick in the post. Quick spin and back for the bucket. The young kids have a tough time defending that because they've never had to play post defense before. Good defense by Anthony. Better offense from Tarek. Arnov out top. Over the screen and cans the three. That is not what you want to see if you're the Slim's Barbershop team. Anthony drops it to a cutting binion. Dave with the hesitation and layup. It's good. Tie game. Mike to Anthony. Anthony, spin, glass, bucket. Sherrick out to Pischke. Three up and it's good. Slim's now up one. Things are getting heated since Dave Sr.'s leg was grabbed by a player on the floor. The league commissioner is on the court trying to cool things down. Arnob drives, pulls, bang, one point game. Pischke blows by Arnob for the reverse scoop. Arnob drives on Slim, creates space, releases, hits the three, and gets the foul. I don't know about that foul. Looked like he kicked his feet out and fell down to me. Binion up, misses the layup. Gets his own rebound and up again, good. Dave Sr. has got to be the only player in the league to simultaneously have young man strength and old man strength. Ballers timeout. Slims up four, nine to go in the first round playoff game. Arnov hits another three, cuts the deficit to six. Anthony Lynch at the stripe, misses the first. Slims has missed their last four free throws down the stretch. Make that five, and here come the ballers. Oh, Anthony with the steal. One man to beat, and he hits the layup. Slims up eight. The ballers have to score here to make this a game, and they miss. Wow, Slims barely escapes with a victory to advance to the second round, which starts right after this game. Second game of the night is Slims against the Savages. The Savages finished in second place in the regular season, so they had a bye in the first round. These teams did not play each other in the regular season. 
Anthony to inbound. Hits Mike cutting to the basket. You get the feeling none of these teams know that Mike can flat out play ball. Tommy Childs brings the ball up, passes to Jimmy, and Jimmy blows by Dave Sr. for the layup. An interesting fact is that Jimmy is also a barber. Mike drives the wing. Nice up and under. Brandon is a tough defensive matchup for anyone. It will be a huge key for the Slims team tonight if Anthony can contain him. Good D right there. There was a nice move and shot. Maybe I spoke too soon. Make that three nice plays. Wow. Chip for three, and the Savages take the lead. Slim in the post. Out to Julian. Julian for three. Oh, the bank is open. Slims takes the lead back, 22-20. Mike Clark on the drive. Lefty scoop. Mike is having a game. Who's next for three? And this game is a seesaw battle. Pishke to Sherrick in the post, and Sherrick is just too much for them inside. Tommy kicks it to the corner, baseline drive, and a layup to give the Savages a two-point lead at halftime. Mike Clark to inbound the ball. Mike throws it to Dave Sr. Back to Mike. Mike drives, kicks it to Pishke. Pishke for three. Got it. And the lead by one. Anthony drives, tipped away. Savages with a break, two on one. Chip to Tommy, Tommy with a layup. Almost another Slims turnover, turns into a broken play and Sherrick saves it with a layup and the foul. Anthony drives, dishes to Sherrick, loose ball and Dave Sr. picks it up for the layup. Look at these veterans getting loose balls for layups. 46, 44, Slims Barbershop. This game is back and forth. You wonder if the Slims team can sustain their energy down the stretch and against the younger, quicker, and more rested Savages. Timeout, Savages. Slims up five. Tommy Child shoots one last attempt to get back in the game and misses. The Savages concede the rest of the game. Slims is on to the championship which I'm now being told will not be played tonight, but it will be played next week. David Binion Jr. just made it here after work to the gym to play in the championship game and is warming up for absolutely nothing. The team that came out of the other side of the bracket is going to be the dad bods. So we have a rematch in the championship game. I'm sure everybody's excited about it, but for tonight... I am giving my boys their final haircuts before they go away to school. Julius will be a sophomore, Calvin will be a freshman, and I will be an empty nester. I'm driving Julius out to Colorado. Uh, their mom is driving Calvin to Indiana. Do you have the Xbox? Yeah, I got it. You heading out now? Yeah. I mean, I just, I love you. I'm so proud of you. I never thought you were going to stop fucking around. <laughs> and what you've done is so impressive to me, and I'm, I'm just so proud. All right, I'll see you, buddy. Catch you soon. All right. Morning after I said goodbye to Calvin, my older son Julius and I took off for Colorado where he goes to school. Their mom and I got divorced when they were young. I was always real conscious of spending as much time as I could with both of them. But as they grew up, Calvin developed more interest in basketball and baseball, things that I played when I was growing up. And Julius was into track and cross country. I joined cross country eighth grade and stayed with the, until the end of high school. And I had the body for it. I was a little lanky, skinny kid. I had never been to a cross country meet before I went to the first one that he raced in. And man, it's fun. I love going to cross country meets. And we did a lot of other things together, but I was always worried that I was slighting him in time spent because of all the time that I spent with Calvin, taking him to basketball games, playing against him, playing with him. Is that a video? Yeah. Oh, that's awkward. Um, not really. I wish I liked basketball enough to play with you guys, but I, I didn't. 
and I kind of didn't feel any. I don't. I felt indifferent about it. I guess. But nothing against you either. Did you feel that way? Did you feel like I didn't want to hang out with you? No, I just figured you were a teenage boy. <laughs> Of a man staring at a future in the creases of my hand, it reads like a final letter. I'm leaving for my fan, but it's written in language they would never understand. And late repenting, never deviating from a plan. I drive by, headed for the valley of the dam. The wheel spin, I'm looking for a sacrificial lamb. The road tactics like a soldier out in the Sudan. Listen, was this a matter of flesh and blood? Yes, it was. Does it matter who win and lose? Yes, it does. It ain't about the most blessed love. When you return to the essence, what is it back to the essence of? Greatness I wasn't in the presence of. Cause you was fake and never measured up. You just a nigga on this regular But how far am I ahead of ya? It just as easily could have been me instead of ya Well, it all boils down to this. Two teams with a long history of playing against each other in big games. Slims handled the dad bods a couple weeks ago in the regular season finale. But tonight, they are without Mike and Calvin because they left for school, and David Jr. because he is working. Into Sherrick in the post, being guarded by Ryan Harris. Sherrick pulls out the MJ fadeaway and draws first blood against Mini LeBron. Donnell with the rebound and kick out to Ryan Harris for three, knocked down. When he hits his first shot, it is not a good sign for opponents. Harris dribbles up. Pulls from 24, it's down. Harris six, Slims four. Sherrick from three, and he answers. Slims by one. Anthony pulls from three, it's in. Slims up 10-8 but I'm not so sure they want to get in a three-point shooting match with the dad bods. Anthony kicks out to Pischke. Pischke almost out of bounds, and he drains it. Anthony on the spin. Bucket and the foul. Slims up 18-12. Donnell outside hits Harris way out top. Harris pulls. Bang. Davon Ellis walks it up. Pulls from 26, net. Tie game at 18 apiece. Pischke to Anthony for three. Anthony is on fire. Harris from close to 30 feet, knots it up at 21. Julian spots up from three, and he hits it to keep it close at 29-28. Dad bye. Paul Kowalson from three, and it's good. He's got five straight, and it seems like everyone on the dad bods is hitting anything they shoot. Pischke drives, bucket. Slims down by two. Kowalson with the steal. This Slims team needs to not turn the ball over for easy dad bods buckets. Oates hits an easy layup to end the first half. Not a good finish to the half for Slim's Barbershop. 43-35, dad bods at the half. Armstrong to Davon in the corner. Davon connects on a three to go up 11. Armstrong for two, 13-point game. Sherrick with the jumper. Slim's down 11. Harris shoots from Lake in the Hills and hits it. 14 point game. Loose ball. Donnell gets on the floor and knocks it out to Davon who knocks it down. We are witnessing a shooting clinic. 
Davon from 25, and just like that, it's a 21-point dad bod lead. Nice ball movement for Slims after the timeout. Binion with the layup. Got to try to get back one bucket at a time. Pischke, deep three, rimming, yes! But Slims is still down 17. Kowalson drives on Slim, kicks it to the corner. Another deep three. Bounces up on the rim, and it's in. This is one of the best shooting displays I've ever seen. Blown defensive plays by Slims and great shooting by the dad bods has decided this game. Every time Slims Barbershop has been caught out of position, the dad bods have capitalized on the mistake. Slim jogs up and hits a meaningless three that cuts the deficit to 20, and dad bods will go home champions tonight. I think it definitely would have made a difference. You know, hands down, it would have made a difference. How much of a difference now? You know, like you said, they were on. They were shooting well. Um, they were clicking on all cylinders. Hence, that's why they beat us so well. You know, that's what they had to do in order to beat us, as well as we were shorthanded. If we were fully staffed, you know, anything happens. You know basketball, anything happens. You can change, you know, the whole play of the game just on a couple, you know, plays. You know, it's not, you know, maybe we wouldn't have won, but um, because of how well they played, um, but it definitely would have been a different game. In the championship game, yeah, they hit a lot of shots, man. But, you know, defensively as a whole, I think the way we started the game and it just trickled, it was a trickle-down effect where, you know, defense was, was was really non-existent as a whole, you know. You know, guys not getting back, guys getting blown by, you know, but, and they took advantage of it and, you know, missing those younger guys, that means us older guys had to play longer. And I think they t took advantage of that by, you know, running and and we didn't play pretty much good defense at all that game. And but it's so funny we're always in the championship. So you know, when they say we can't play anymore, what does that say about you young guys? And y'all keep facing the old guys in the championship. <laughs> so, but on the low, I know it's a sign of respect, man. The young guys, you know, but a lot of our teammates don't understand that all these young guys want to kick my butt so <laughs> us old guys got to work a little bit harder than normal so but it's good man it keeps the competitive spirits going yeah I, I I would say for me it's playing with not only my dad but my dad and his friends and who he used to play with you know I hear about it all the time how you know he's how he was a hooper and everything and it's nice to actually see it you know in person and actually playing with him I think was just the best part of it um, just the whole camaraderie of his friends, as well as bringing me along and just playing with me. Yeah, we got beat by dad bods in the final by a lot, but I think Shake said it best when he said, we're not washed up yet. Boy, I would have liked to have gotten another shot at that last three, but I had to get to work. Don't worry, though, I'll be back just like our team. I don't think we have a choice but to stick together. Shake, hit me one time. So brand new. I want to spend my life with you. Let me take baby. Since we've been together, ooh, loving you forever. Now I need you to be the one you come running to. Let's stay together 
Loving you weather, weather. Times are good or bad, happy or sad. Yeah, yeah, y'all. Yeah. Somebody, why people break up, hey, mm, turn around and make up, mm, I just, just can't see, cause you never do that to me, oh, babe, be